It's not every day that I get really excited for a new VR game, but this is an exception. The game we're talking about today is likely going to become one of the biggest deals for the gaming side of the VR industry for the coming decades, and it's releasing this year. Today, we're talking about, of course, Bone Lab, a game that was just properly announced last week, and hidden within its minute and 44 second trailer are countless intentional details and clues. And I think that once you see what I'm talking about here, you'll understand why I'm so excited. And you'll also understand that Bone Lab is way more than just a game. Instead, a mod haven, interactive engine, and platform for the future. So, let's take a full dive into Bone Lab. After years of weird hype cycles for VR games that almost always end up being pretty disappointing or exclusive to a single platform, my expectation for most upcoming VR titles are usually really reserved. Basically, I don't like hyping games, especially VR games. But Stress Level Zero's Bone Lab follow-up to the 2019 Steam VR hit Boneworks is a little different. Think about what Half-Life did for PC gaming and how all of its tendrils have affected every segment of games gaming sense, and we're pretty much looking at that sort of effect or importance, but for VR. And there's a lot of reasons, but we're going to start with the most obvious one that most people completely miss, and it's in the first three seconds of the trailer. Mero Interactive Engine. What makes Bones work? Mero. Well, also lots of other stuff too, but you get it. Bones are just hollow, brittle pieces of organic matter without the marrow filling, and Boneworks and Bone Lab really aren't all that different. Marrow is the physics interaction engine that makes the series so unique. Everything within every level has a weight and mass, and everything you put into it, mod or vanilla, will behave accordingly how you'd expect because of Marrow. It's basically the framework as to what every system is built upon for these two games. And apart from Marrow being a technology that potentially could be licensed by Stress Level Zero to make better VR games easier to make, there's a much bigger deal here that Mero enables mods. Nowadays, mods are in kind of a weird state. I at least like to think that everyone kind of knows that modifications made to games have basically made the current gaming industry what it is today. I mean, look at some of the most popular games of all time. Counter-Strike was a mod. League of Legends is a mod of a mod of a mod. Fortnite, PUBG, Overwatch, they can all trace their own origins back to mods as well. Almost every game you enjoy playing can also be traced back in a similar way to mods. But mods are kind of losing mainstream popularity. Games that literally were spawned because of mods eventually stop supporting them entirely. And in general, the modding community is simultaneously the largest and also the smallest it's ever been. It's turned into kind of a hassle and something that most people don't ever touch. But there's a much larger picture here when it comes to VR. Flat screen gaming has, in a lot of ways, moved past the modding breakthrough stage, where new genres are defined every year by new Source or Warcraft 3 mods. VR, however, has not moved past that stage. VR's main gameplay principles, figuring out what works and what doesn't, is still entirely undiscovered territory. And the real beauty of the gaming industry that history shows over and over again is that people make the the best games that people actually want to play, and it's usually out of already existing games. Mods and user-generated content is king, and I don't think that will ever change. But back on Bone Lab and Marrow and its own mods, in the trailer we see a designated section for a tactical time trial, the arena makes a comeback from Boneworks, there is a dedicated mod section which I'll return to in just a little bit, but first I want to talk about this, the Body Mall. This is a massive component of Bone Lab for a few reasons. One, in the game, you can be anyone or anything that you want. You can be a hot anime waifu, master chief, cutie pie, it doesn't matter. Bone Lab has a body remapping system that allows you to import any character model you want. Meaning, I can grab my VRChat avatar, import it into Bone Lab, and play the game as my virtual self, which is kind of crazy. But it's not just a simple avatar import. Mero fills in the gaps to give your character all sorts of attributes and sizes the character appropriately 
appropriately for your actual body, so that whether you're a 3 foot tall anime girl or a 12 foot tall orc, the game will act appropriately and it will function like you'd expect. If you import a full size job of the hut, your character will be heavier, changing how they interact with the world, maybe even squishing people. But this also changes the way that you interact with your own virtual body. In the beginning of the trailer, the user rolls a dice as a character randomizer, and you can see that their own interactions with their avatar changes as the body size changes as well. Basically, Stress Level Zero have created a full avatar physics characteristic and proportion mapper. As it says here, no matter the avatar, if you touch your actual hips, you'll also be touching the hips of your avatar. It automatically sizes and proportions everything, uh, of course, assuming that the avatar actually has hips. But there's something else, and this isn't confirmed, but it would make total sense with what Bone Lab is. If I can import avatars with strength and size and all of these other characteristics, these same avatars that you can wear can also likely be used as NPCs for custom maps and with other modding tools. Technically, we only got to see one new type of NPC see in Bone Lab through this trailer, that being the skeleton, but really, through the body mall, we may have just gotten a sneak peek that there are likely infinite possibilities for who and what you'll be interacting with. Hypothetically, you could even set up an entire room where you have to fight off yourself. And of course, with other avatar stuff, there's the obvious IK updates and fixes, like having your freaking legs clamber on walls instead of just floating underneath you. That's awesome. And then, of course, a full custom map designer to mess around with the physics engine. We've already seen a small little sneak peek of this as well. The Steam store page showing us a go-kart on a bowling alley to knock down Hulk-sized pins, or maybe they're normal-sized pins and the go-kart is really tiny. Don't know. But this is just to show off how ridiculous mod support can get. If you can imagine it, you can likely build it for Bone Lab. Vehicles, weapons, physics, characters, anything. But I haven't even gotten to the most important part of this whole thing, and it's extremely obvious, but this alone will have massive repercussions for the future of VR games, Stress Level Zero, and us, the VR community. And it goes way deeper than it seems on the surface. So look, real quick, let me just give you a situation that I've encountered way too often. Often. If five people ask me, hey Thrill, just got a VR headset, what's your favorite VR game that I need to try? I'll usually reply with Boneworks. Well, statistically, about four out of those five people will look through the Quest store and cry. Because they just realize that they can't play it unless they have a one to two thousand dollar PC and a VR headset. The VR landscape has shifted massively since Stress Level Zero made Boneworks. Last year alone, the Quest 2 sold an approximate 10 plus million VR headsets and that number is growing daily. And most of those people do not have access to a PC capable of running something like Boneworks or Half-Life Alex for Pete's sake, but now they can all play Bone Lab. The game is getting a full release on Quest with full mod support, avatars, custom maps, the same Marrow physics engine. It's not a mobile port, it's the full package. Meaning this game will reach millions that Boneworks just couldn't. And it's not a watered down version either. Graphics comparisons look particularly impressive for this game between Quest 2 and a full PC VR setup. Of course, there's still going to be things that you can do on a PC that you can't do on Quest 2. You're not getting the, the full enchilada, but you're getting like 99% of it. And right now is where you might be saying, okay, Thrill, we all know it's coming for Quest, no duh. And yeah, of course, it was revealed during the Quest showcase for Pete's sake. But this is just where the potential gets exciting. Bone Lab on its own, I'm sure is going to have an interesting story, and the game itself will probably be crazy, insane fun just like Boneworks but cranked up to the next level. I mean, you start the game by putting a noose around yourself, that's already edgy, weird VR territory, but now we can get into the amazing benefit of a game like Bone Lab. Once again, user-generated content is king. But you know what you need to make user-generated content work? Users. And this is purely speculation. We won't know until the game drops later this year. But when Bone Lab does drop, I almost guarantee we're going to be seeing the game crush sales record for VR titles on both the Quest Store and Steam. If recent hype around the game is anything to go off of, it's likely going to be one of, if not the highest selling VR titles ever. Which means a few things. For one, user-generated content, like I said, only works if you have users to generate that content. And with Bone Lab releasing on all platforms, including mod support, we're about to see a lot of user-generated content. Like, 
a lot. We're about to see likely one of the most modded VR games ever if you don't count VRChat. It's literally a selling point on the box. And out of this modding craze, not even Stress Level Zero knows what's going to happen. We may be watching the future of VR gaming unfold while being a part of it in the exact same way people playing Warcraft 3 mods were unknowingly watching and helping the biggest gaming phenomenon ever take off. Entirely new game modes, new gameplay tropes, level design, cross-game mashups, anything is possible. And I also incentivize you to start imagining what's possible, and to rustle your jimmies, it's even hinted that it's possible to mod the entirety of Boneworks into Bone Lab. These tools are looking to be no joke. But there's also the profound effects of launching a game like Bone Lab for a smaller independent studio like Stress Level Zero. If this game does as well as I'm predicting, for example, we're also watching one of the very first VR game studio blow-ups. From Stress Level Zero's first few titles, like Hover Junkers from six years ago, to now Bone Lab, creating a very real reason for people to even get or use a VR headset. Bone Lab is turning out to be a real system seller. This is the Halo to Xbox, the World of Warcraft to PC, the bones for VR. The core systems that SLZ have developed with Mero have created a platform for them to make more games with their own black magic flair. And who knows? I could be vastly off my rocker here, and I'm also not hiding it, it's no secret that I really love Boneworks. Just a month ago, I made a 13 minute long full dive video essay on why I thought Boneworks works. So of course, there's a part of me that's probably biased towards Bone Lab and its quest release especially. But I also can't deny that it's not only my most anticipated VR title for this year, it's a lot of people's most anticipated title. I just can't help but look at what Boneworks already is, see the systems that Stress Level Zero are implementing for Bone Lab, see the extremely ripe VR audience looking for something exactly like this and not get excited about the massive potential for what this is shaping up to actually be. People thought VR would take off when it got a Half-Life game, and in a lot of ways, it kinda did. But honestly, Half-Life Alex is sort of used against VR's growth nowadays in a lot of ways, showing how VR didn't even take off to mass consumer mainstream success even after a Half-Life game. But I think the whole idea of that is wrong. VR doesn't need a Half-Life game to blow up. VR needs its Half-Life game to blow up. And I think this just might be it. Of course though, we'll have to see, and users will have to generate that content, and people will have to generate content about that content. This is just kinda how things go nowadays. The one thing I see possibly making this not the moment quite yet is the lack of multiplayer support, but believe it or not, that was already a mod for Boneworks, so anything is possible, I guess. I'm just kind of excited to get to experience this with all of you guys. We're watching VR evolve and grow, and I feel like experiences like this and, well, the other big user-generated VR world, VR chat, we're all building this thing together and experiencing it together. And that's really, really fun. I feel like it's a great big community building our future. But now I wanted to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you guys. And if you're wanting to join to make this beautiful list, you have my immense gratitude and I appreciate you guys allowing me to make content like this. But also, don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.